This game is rated M and is intended for mature audiences. Alright, welcome back to Fruit of Grisea, everybody! Streaming this a little bit earlier than I usually do, but we're continuing with Yumiko's route today. We finished up her giant flashback last time, so... I'm hoping the writing doesn't start falling off at this point, but you never know. We'll just have to see about that. Uh... <laughs> nice to see you too, Simpsons R Us. <laughs> That, that's quite a greeting there. It'll get uploaded eventually, when I get time for it. Alright, here we are. We're on this part. The intruders, apparently. Alright, let's see. Early the next morning, I'm stretching in preparation for my usual running when I hear quiet footsteps on the stairs. Oh yeah, I should do a catch-up. Yeah, last time we finished up Yumiko's flashbacks. She had kind of a bad childhood. Her mom was sick all the time. Her parents were kind of separated. Her dad was a tool. And yeah, her grandparents were terrible. That's pretty much how it happened. It just... <laughs> there, I summarized it more concisely than... Uh, I did something more concisely than I... <clears throat> I summarized it more concisely than the game did. Hi, Proxima. I'm doing well. Oh, sorry to hear that. I hope things are going well with you. <laughs> it's Yumiko. A familiar look of mild surprise. However, where Sakaki's expression would normally shift to a frown, today it changes to something hesitant and uncertain. What's the matter? Your face is red. Still carrying that fever around? Oh yeah, she caught a fever at the end of last time. Forgot about that. I.e., we carried you to bed, and maybe we gave her medicine? I don't even remember, honestly, at this point. I really don't. Good to hear. Hey, Blame! Welcome! Yeah, I remember you! How's it going? It's been a while. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> I didn't do anything worth being thanked for. Oh, that's right. Yumiko told us, told Yuji the whole, like, eight-hour story. Uh, that she told us last time. So yeah, he did kind of listen there. I mean, there wasn't much else to do. It was pouring rain and we couldn't move because apparently rain... Uh, <laughs> apparently people really don't like walking through the rain. You asked for my permission before you started talking, and I agreed to listen. There's nothing wrong with that. I've noticed Sakaki tends to grow oddly sullen when the topic of my job comes up, but today she seems downright docile. The girl does look healthy enough. Still, it's entirely possible yesterday's events left some lingering psychological effects. Oh yeah, that's right, you're in Germany. It's really late for you. Well, <laughs> if, if you have insomnia, you're welcome to stick around. <laughs> Sakaki? As long as your request is in place, I'll protect you. Rest assured. That's all. Still don't know why she like. I don't know why all the girls crush on Yuji. He kind of sucks. Finishing my leg stretches, I stand up and check the clock. Just about time for me to be heading out. I'm going to be running for a while. Unless you need anything. Alright then, see you this afternoon. Pfft, what tact. Feeling Sakaki's eyes following me from behind, I leave the dorm. I don't have much to offer Sakaki right now. A simple promise is the best I can do. Hopefully that's enough to provide some reassurance. The past can't be taken back, no matter how hard you try. That's a lesson I myself learned all too well. All the more reason she has to value her present. Hopefully they've just given up, but... Fortunately, the threats on uh, approaching Sakaki have gone quiet for the moment. If this pattern continues, it shouldn't be hard for me to keep my promise. Da -da -da. Oh, we're back on the riverbank. At sunset. And a few days later... Oh, it's sunset. That means the the crooks are going to attack. They always attack at this time. In an echo of Sakaki's past, the hopeful present abruptly takes a sharp turn for the worse. You alright, Sakaki? Can you keep running? 
I like the rock music whenever it plays. So she says, but it's obvious at a glance that the girl's close to her limit. Harsh gasps for air interrupt the feeble words coming out of her mouth. Damn it. They caught me napping! Seemingly taking my words of regret as their cue, a number of men swiftly surround us. Oh, this CG again. <laughs> Wonderful. Protecting Sakaki behind my back, I confront a semicircle of attackers. I love how in all the CG he always is like, Sakaki, get behind me. It's like, you do realize that the, all the guys are behind us too, right? Yeah, you need to protect me. This sort of scene has certainly become common enough over the last month. Yeah, I feel like I've seen this picture before. But this time our opposition is in an entirely different league. Was this what they were aiming for all along? They stopped a car above the riverbank and came down on us suddenly. Up until that point, it was the same as usual. But as my master once told me, relying on precedent is a dangerous game. Always think outside the range of your predictions. A lesson, it seems, I didn't learn nearly well enough. As I readied myself for another simple one-by-one -one attack, the first free man out of the car charged at me simultaneously. What? Caught by surprise, I faltered for just a moment. They seized their chance and executed a beautifully coordinated attack. The first two moved to grab my arms and legs, while the trailing man, man came at me and to deliver the disabling blow. Alright, good night, Blame. <laughs> yeah, please get some sleep. It's very late there, and sleep is important. <laughs> Whoa! Shooting star! The fight would have been over in seconds if I'd misjudged the attacks from the left and right even slightly. Stooping down to avoid their grasping, grasping arms, I kicked the first man's ankle and chopped my hand into the second man's liver. Whoa! That's a that's a red shooting star. Since when do they attack at? Gah! I didn't even have time to catch my breath before the third man's fist came down on me from above. Yay! Action! Whoa! <laughs> Hi, GX. Welcome. Uh, so uh, this game is weird. It's a lot more uncomfortable than Hollow Knight, but you're welcome to join in. We're just beating up some thugs right now. <laughs> Sheer Reflex got my elbow up in time to block the punch, but his attacks continued in an unrelenting stream. Damn it. That hurts, asshole! This guy had some impressive back muscles, and he knew how to use them. His tightly clenched fists swung down at my head with the force of two massive hammers. A single direct hit would have given me a concussion at the very least, and a knockout seemed a very real possibility. Ha! With a sharp battle cry, I... Oh, that was supposed to be a battle cry. With a sharp battle cry, I slipped by the hammer man's side and drove my heel into his knee. <laughs> Our attacks are white, their attacks are red. <laughs> I, only, I only swore because that's what the game demanded of me. <laughs> the hammer stopped in his tracks. As he reflexively reached down for his right leg, I followed up with a second kick, this time to the head. Yeah. I'd somehow managed to bring down the first wave of attackers, but the dramatic change in their tactics was alarming. I could feel my heart thudding frantically in my chest. If they try that with a bigger team, it's going to get ugly. <laughs> Luckily, even though I took three bloody hits, I'm still okay in this CG. <laughs> my instinctive response was to run for it with Sakaki in tow. Unfortunately, our enemies clearly anticipated that. Where they used to have their entire force charged down from the car, this time they've set up a second team fervor along the bank to cut off our retreat. Can't let them all attack at once or it's game over! I carefully size up the group of men surrounding us. One thing's immediately clear, there's not going to be an easy way out this time. Listen up, Sakaki. I'm going for a preemptive strike. Once I open up a gap in their perimeter and make a run for, make a run for it, I'll keep them off your back. There's no time to debate this. Let's go. I break into a sprint, heading to a, for a point where three of the five men surrounding us can easily move to intercept. As expected, they instantly launch a simultaneous attack, aiming to trap me in a pincer. There we go! I dodge grasping arms from the left and right at the very last possible moment, slipping forward to leave the two of the men charging directly at each other. Oh, we did the classic Looney Tunes bait and switch. Yes. Oh yeah, for those who don't know, this game is absolutely rated M. Like, 100%. It's it's definitely the most adult game I've played. There's not gonna be any nudity, I'm gonna... I'm gonna blur out any really nasty images, but yeah, there's there's bad language and inappropriate themes. Yep. The pair of dark-suited men jerk to an unsteady halt like a pair of outfielders chasing the same fly ball. Seizing the moment, I grab them by the legs and flip them off their feet. Because you can do that, apparently. Bleh! The two men hit the ground head first with a satisfying pair of thunks. Before I can even confirm that they're staying down, their buddy's got a sleeper chokehold on me from behind. <laughs> but I'd seen this coming from the moment he started circling around behind me. 
I bend back into the hold and then strain my abdominal muscles and swing my body sharply forward. <laughs> Tossed over my shoulder in a fro you might see in a judo competition, the man flies a good two meters forward before leading, landing face first in the dirt. That's free taken care of. Now all I need to do is keep the two coming from behind, occupied long enough for Sakaki to get clear. All right, now run, Sakaki. <laughs> Hurry up! Still shooting reluctant glances in my direction, Sakaki begins to run along the riverbank. The other two attackers quickly try to slip past me and pursue her. Not happening. As the pair splits apart to either side, I hurl a stone tied to a heavy stream towards the feet of a faster runner. What's weird about this is like the protagonist, like this game simultaneously is like, yeah, the protagonist is like invincible and also tries to be. Oh, he's not really though, because like, <laughs> like for example, in the past for these situations, like the main character is like he was able to fight off the guys because they kept attacking him one by one, and he was like, man, if they didn't attack me one at a time, it would be a different story. But now they're not attacking one by one, and he's still beating them up. So they, 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 <laughs> it, does <laughs> it doesn't really make sense. <laughs> As the pair splits apart from Seaver's side, I hurl a stone tied to a heavy stream towards the feet of a faster runner. Tripped up by the cord, the man turns a somersault in the air and lands awkwardly on the ground, one arm crunching loudly underneath him. Even as I'm confirming that he's down, I've begun to grapple with his partner. <coughs> the moment we come to grips, it's clear to me that I've left the most troublesome one of the bunch for last. His physique didn't particularly stand out in this group, but he's got dense muscles and an excellently balanced body. This is exactly his sort of fight. I was hoping to take him down smoothly and catch up with Sakaki, but I guess that's not happening. I can only pray Sakaki manages to get out of here on her own. <laughs> Silent except for his intermittent breathing, his, the man moves his body back and forth in a variety of ways, probing for a gap in my defenses. It's a far cry from the frantic wriggling of an amateur. Every movement has meaning. I can't let my guard down for even a moment. Please get out of here! Keeping half an eye on Sakaki, I desperately hold him in check. And just as she's finally reaching the foot of the slope, distracted by the fight behind her, Sakaki stumbles over a heavy patch of undergrowth and falls to the ground. Sakaki! For a split second, her scream distracts me. Oof. That's not a red shooting star. Bleh! Dizzyingly intense pain shoots through my left arm. He got me! I can feel the skin of my arm rapidly growing hot, as if suddenly plunged in a tub of boiling water. A small glinting silver knife sticks straight out of my forearm like some absurd work of modern art. My grip on the man's weakens against my will. In an instant, he's broken free of the grapple. The corners of his mouth curl up in something vaguely resembling a smile as he turns his attention to Sakaki. Uh oh, she's crying. Sakaki scrambles frantically across the ground, her face distorted it with terror. As if savoring the moment, the man begins to lope toward her at a relaxed pace. His first movement, or his first moment, of carelessness. <laughs> um, DX, if you're trying to binge my playthroughs of this, there's over a hundred videos each around a half hour. It's meh. I mean, you can if you want, but see ya, but uh, it's gonna take you a long while to get through all that. Hey Nick, what's up? I normally don't play this till tomorrow, but I'm busy this weekend, so really, <laughs> this moment tonight's the only real time I have free to do this. I won't let you! With one sharp yank, I tear the knife out of my arm, then hurl it at the man's ankle. Yeah, because that's realistic. <laughs> that's a man who sounds like he's in pain. <laughs> it's a goofy gorge. The man collapses onto the ground and reaches down for his wounded leg. Before he can get his hands around the knife, I straddle him and smash a fist into his solar plexus. Gastric juice spraying from his mouth. Ugh. The man loses consciousness. I can feel blood flowing rapidly out of my body. Abruptly released from the tension of the fight, exhausted and bleeding, I look up to find the world swaying before my eyes. It looks like Yuji's not completely invincible. He's also not a robot. Sakaki rises to her feet and runs over. Are all the other characters dead or knocked out? I thought we only, like, disabled... The like, two guys just ran into each other. Like, surely they're still around. Staring wide-eyed at the blood streaming down my arm, she presses her hands to her mouth, speechless of horror. I'm fine. You need to get out of here, Sakaki. Hurry. I'll be all right once I stop the bleeding. Get moving. There might be more of it where those guys came from. Completely ignoring my repeated instructions to run, Sakaki reaches into her breast pocket and takes out a handkerchief and holds it to my wound. The pure white piece of cloth is quickly dyed bright red. 
It's symbolism. Her anguished expression distorts still further. I've heard people say women are a little less queasy around blood because of their regular menstrual cycle, but I doubt that makes an injury like this any less surreal and terrifying. No, 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 no. If there's one thing I know, at least about me, my own blood does not bother me at all. Like, I'll literally just be... Oh, I'm bleeding? Oh, I'm bleeding. I didn't even notice. It's other people's blood that makes me squeamish. I'm telling you, it's fine! Right now you need to... Sakaki's face is filled with uncharacteristically raw and obvious emotion. But then again, lately I've seen quite a few human expressions starting to leak out from behind that indifferent front of hers. You're, real, you're a real one to talk, Yuji. In any case, there's no point letting this circular argument drag on forever. We're just wasting time at this point. Fine. T tightly under the elbow. Sorry about the handkerchief, but keep it over the wound itself for now. There should be bandages in my bag. Can you wrap me over the entire area? Appreciate it. With my guidance, Sakaki performs some rudimentary first aid. Soon I'm back on my feet. The blood loss has left me more than a little lighthearted, but we nonetheless hurry along the road home as quickly as possible. After all, there's no telling what, those, what else those people might have planned. The old rules clearly no longer apply. Sakaki hasn't spoken a word, most likely out of concern for me. It's painfully obvious that she's worried, but that only makes this feel even worse. Pathetic. What kind of a bodyguard makes the client worry about them? For the moment, I've got uh, I gotta get us back to safe ground and plan some immediate countermeasures. Their tactics have changed on a fundamental level. We can't get away with the usual routine anymore. Across from the red glow of the setting sun, a flock of black rain clouds push threateningly into the sky as if to reinforce the looming threat. Looks like it's going to be another rainy night. So, Oh, guys, it's worse, Dad. I guess that's not actually a big competition. There have been very few dads in this game, and like the few we've had have actually been pretty good. Sachi's dad was good, Sachi's uncle was great. I guess Mitru's dad was only okay. He had his ups and downs. All right, and he's planning to kill us. I love Rain. Rain's great. Oh, yeah! I love this song. Oh, no. I hate this girl. Understandably, it doesn't take long for Amine to notice that there's something wrong. <laughs> I just, I can't imagine why Michiaki would have to hire goons to kill us instead of doing it himself. He don't want to dirty his own hands. Practically the moment we're inside the dorm, her shocked voice attracts the attention of everyone lounging around in the lobby. As they run up, the blood seems to drain from their faces. Oh, great. Guys, th th there's, I can explain. You see, the thing was, uh, we both had tickets to the ball game, and we were having a great time. Coincidentally, we both happened to be there, and then... There was a foul ball, and it just hit me right in the arm. And apparently they packed that ball with titanium. I don't know, it just ripped my arm apart. It's perfectly reasonable. Nothing to worry about. Well, you know, stuff happens. Well, at, you know, at least it wasn't yet another car accident. The lazy summer evening quickly gives way to a borderline panic. <laughs> you are not driving me to the hospital! I haven't forgotten what your driving was like when we went to the beach. <laughs> I'd rather get in the crazy taxi. No, there are some complicated circumstances, so I'd prefer not to make too much of a scene. A little treatment should be enough. Sachi? <laughs> Sorry, but can you help me out? Sachi's better than the hospital. Sachi and Michiru noisily dash back to their respective rooms. Hey, you know, props to Michiru for wanting to help. 
Guess I'll head back to my room for the moment. Sakaki, would you help me out over there? Appreciate it. I'm, I don't feel like telling you the whole story, Amine. I really don't feel like telling the story to you. A few minutes after Sakaki helped me into bed, Sachi treats my wound with the skill of an experienced nurse. It's no worse than what I would have gotten at the hospital. Our maid's fearsome capabilities in this field are worthy of further examination, but for the moment explaining the situation to the uneasy classmates gathered around me has to come first. Well, you know, st rough stuff can happen at the ball game. Amine responds to my brief summary with those words in a worried sigh. Everyone had some idea that Sakaki had been coming under attack, but a knife coming into play seems to have left them more than a little disturbed. You don't need to worry about me. Their change in strategy just caught me by surprise today. I won't slip up like that next time. Maybe we should hire more guys. Like, it's like, alright, Yumiko, there's like 50 guys that are trying to, like, kill you. And me. But don't worry. I got this. All on my own. It's like, what if all 50 of them attack you at once? It's okay. I'm anime protagonist. <laughs> And that's, that's my impression of it. Yeah, of course. You see, Yuji agrees. It's a lie. An attempt to reassure them. Nothing more. The ex-military man who knifed me today was a seriously tough opponent, and the others were no slouches either. Even under ideal circumstances, it would have been a tough fight. My failure this time is only going to encourage them to double down on the rough tactics. And while they can bring in fresh bodies, my cuts and bruises are going to start slowing me down eventually. I need to start devising countermeasures sooner rather than later. Let's just keep beating up... Presumably, because we keep, like, giving these guys serious injuries, like breaking their ribs and stuff, I'm assuming that despite what the CG says, uh, Yumiko's dad is, like, hiring different guys every single time. So if that's the case, we all we really need to do is eventually break this guy's bank account. Just be like, I, I ran out of money! I ran out of guys to hire! <laughs> every guy in, the, in, like, the Mahama area has just got broken ribs now. <laughs> How convenient. <laughs> Sakaki's been very quiet for a while now. Her face is distinctly downcast. It's not like she's the one who stabbed me, but... Well, she tried! <laughs> Since she's been known to try on occasion, it's probably better not to joke about that. Sorry, but I'm feeling a little tired. Think you could let me sleep for a while? Yumiko, make sure Amine actually leaves the room, because I would not put it past her to hide and watch us sleep creepily. Even Amine doesn't seem eager to throw the usual banter around. Understandable under the circumstances. Sakaki, I'm sure today was a little nerve-wracking for you. A little? Being alone might be frightening right now, so why don't you sleep over in someone else's room? Okay, I thought he was going to say in my room, but I'm very glad that he said someone else's. Okay, you know what? That's actually reasonable. Sorry, Sachi, but would you mind? Sachi would probably be the best choice. She seems like she would be... I was going to say normal, but that's clearly not true. Y yes, I did say... I did believe he was going to do that, because that's exactly the kind of game that this is. Yumiko, I know you haven't even told me that you like me yet, but... Sleep in my bed tonight. Well, that seems like a huge step, and that you definitely shouldn't be doing that until you're married. But, okay. Great, let's have a lewd CG. Blah, blah, blah. And that's, that's the game. Let me know immediately if you notice anything suspicious. They haven't tried anything on school grounds so far, but there's no telling what comes next. <laughs> in the meantime, let's go... If you accidentally say dirty things here, it's much less of a problem than in the other streams. Because again, this is a rated M game. So if chat gets a little M rated at times, that's fine. I still generally encourage people to not. But sometimes it's inevitable, given the subject matter. Skaki barely said a word right in, up until the moment Sachi hustled out of her room. That weighs on my mind a little. But even as I try to think it over, I feel, feel myself sinking slowly into unconsciousness. 
as I sleep. Oh, I... F- <laughs> I read that as, as I sleep, I dream of Sachi. <laughs> this is not the Sachi route. As I sleep, I dream of Sakaki. I see her as a young girl, standing very still in absolute darkness, sobbing endlessly. When I approach, her appearance changes to the young woman I know. But the tears don't stop flowing down her face. No matter what I say to her, Sakaki stands oblivious in the darkness, crying bitter tears. Sakaki? The moment I wake up, I notice an odd sensation enveloping my left hand. The darkened room is silent, but I sense someone's presence nearby. Yeah, because you're superhuman. It almost feels like a continuation of the dream, but when I move my eyes to the side, the truth becomes clear. Oh, hey! It's a new CG! And I, I actually, I really like the CG. This is good art. I mean, now she's the one who's staring at us as we sleep. But I think what she's doing is replacing our bandages. Sakaki. I'm sure Sachi ushered her out of the room. She should be sleeping by now. Instead, she's sitting by my side. It's alright. I got some sleep. Have you been sitting here all this time? She answers with a quiet nod. Normally I'd be terrified to have Murder Girl in my room, but she's softened up a bit, so I can't believe I trust her. The game looks so colorful, like in terms of the actual colors or in terms of the dialogue, because both are true. Uh. <laughs> That's why I was dreaming about you. I mean, I wasn't dreaming about you. The strange warmth surrounding my left wrist was coming from Sakaki's hands. I don't really mind. Sakaki's downturned eyes briefly steal a glance at my face. They're a little bloodshot, and I can see a hint of red in her cheeks. Seems that dream just now might have been accurate in a way. Stroking my hand a little, she speaks in a sincerely apologetic tone. Nothing to worry yourself over. When you're on guard duty, that sort of thing's always a possibility. Let's just be thankful no one ended up in the hospital. I mean, you probably would have if you weren't like, No, Sachi can do it. <laughs> yeah, I like, again, there are parts of this game that are really good. Soundtrack, amazing. Graphics, amazing. Some of the actual or overall story, really, really well done. But there's just so much crap that goes along with it. <laughs> I can't truly like it. <laughs> From the look on her face, I can tell Sakaki isn't remotely convinced by this line of argument. <laughs> She's like, I don't I, I don't care if the game has good aspects. <laughs> look, it's nothing you need to feel guilty about. I accepted your request, so I'll put my body on the line when necessary. Even if I get a little banged up, as long as you're safe, that's a success. All of a sudden, her quiet voice grows rough and quavery. <laughs> Seems I chose my words somewhat poorly. Sakaki's reached the end of her endurance. Tears, clearly not the first she's shed tonight, fall onto my bandaged hand. Sakaki. I gotta say, man, if Yumiko just didn't try to kill us at the beginning of the story, like, she'd actually be a great character. Maybe we'll get a bit more of an explanation as to why she literally was like, Oh no, a guy. Let's murder him. But, like... <laughs> ser that's like the one big strike against her. Otherwise, she would definitely be best girl. She actually still might be best girl. But also, that's not a very high bar to go over in this game. The quiet crying begins to grow in intensity. Grasping my palm tightly, Sakaki heaves, a sob heaves with sobs like a frightened child, teardrops raining from her face. Her voice echoes loudly inside the otherwise hushed room. From outside the window, I can hear the faint sound of water cutting through the air. Oh, it, it's when she started crying, the, the clouds started crying. Come to think of it, the forecast today called for rain a little after midnight. It's exactly that sort of dark, ugly rain Sakaki hates so much. Oh no, is, is this where we're going to be like, Yumiko, sleep with us tonight. I hope not. After a few minutes of wordless crying, those words slip out of her mouth. Of what? Oh, 
Relatable. If you care about that so much, why did you try to kill me at the beginning of the game? I'm not saying that Yuji wasn't a tool, but, like, you didn't even know him at the beginning of the game. You're just like, must murder. <laughs> Sakaki squeezes down tighter and tighter. A tear lands on top of her rigid, trembling hands. Then another. <sighs> Losing her mother, betrayed by her father, denied even the chance to make friends. She was pushed into a mock school built as a gilded cage. On an emotional level, it's not surprising that Sakaki finds this latest breakdown deeply painful. But that's also exactly why I want to do something for her. The job isn't easy under these circumstances, but if I can give her some peace of mind, I honestly don't mind taking a few wounds like this. Looking up at Sakaki's miserable face, I find myself regrettable, regretting that I didn't manage to pass it off as a lighter injury. Don't worry about me. I can still do my job, even if... Her face here did not match the voice. <laughs> she's got, like, a calm look on her face, but she's like, ah, screaming at me. Her voice is desperate, hoarse from the tears. The voice acting in this game is A+. Like, the actors and actresses did a phenomenal job. I can't remember the last time I felt such powerful hatred for my own incompetence. Complete silence settles over the room. Sakaki's eyes don't leave mine. With a sorrowful expression on her face, she opens her mouth and speaks sorrowful, sorrowful words. <laughs> Why are you smiling like that? <laughs> Why are you smiling at me like that? That seems a little strange. <laughs> Given what you're saying and how, what you're feeling. <laughs> Yuji gets wounded. PANIC! Dismissing him as a bodyguard. Calm. <laughs> what was that? For a moment, I wonder if I've misheard. But she doesn't hesitate to confirm my fears. But, like, I, I'm still getting paid for the work that I did, right? Like, I did take a stab wound for you, so... What are you saying? You saw those people today! Without me around, next time they'll definitely... All Yumiko really needs is to get a concealed carry permit. It's gonna be a lot harder to kidnap her if she's gonna blow, you, blow your head off. <laughs> to be certain, although they attacked me today, their target is Sakaki alone. If I leave her side, the main fret disappears. Those dangerous goons will probably decrease in number, maybe even disappear altogether. But of course, that's simply because they'll be able to accomplish their objective even without the muscle. I swore I'd protect Sakaki. After making a promise like that, I can't accept a request to abandon her. Sorry, but you're still in danger, so I'm not willing to shrug my shoulders and walk away. I refuse to resign. <laughs> Actually, guys, Yumiko was on, uh, <laughs> Yumiko was on Sports World and was the Taekwondo exhibitionist. She is also a master in Krav Maga and Jiu-Jitsu, so they actually don't stand a chance. Do you know what you're saying here? These people aren't playing around anymore. You're going to... Listen to me, Sakaki. Sakaki's expression tells the story. This isn't something she just said on the spur of the moment. It was a painful decision made after a long thought. The tracks her tears have left on her face. The tightly clenched hands. That anguished inner debate has left its marks on her. But just because I understand the depth of her resolve doesn't mean I can accept this. It's painfully frustrating to know my sloppiness drove her to such an agonizing decision. Alright. I accept your dismissal. Sakaki isn't going to budge no matter what I say. For the moment, there's no other way to give her relief. The instant I speak those words, the tension drains out of her hands. It's as if a heavy weight has fallen from her shoulders, as if she's lost something precious. A hollow excuse for a smile on her face, 
Sakaki continues to apologize to me. Don't apologize. You're not in the wrong. The sound of the rain outside gradually grows louder. A harsh pattering fills the dark room, cut off even from the light of the moon. As of this day, my employment with Sakaki Yumiko came to an end in the form of a dismissal. Things are no better than they were at the beginning. No one's been saved. It's the emptiest of all possible conclusions.